Hello. I hope everyone is doing well today. We are about to get started. Uh, we're very excited to have Brad Larson, Principal Scientist here at Biotech, give today's presentation on automated media exchange for long-term spheroid assays using Multiflow FX's new AMX module. We will be fielding questions at the end of the webinar, so if you have any questions during the pr presentation, please submit them with the chat feature. Uh, we will also be re uh, emailing a recording of today's event to all registrants. So thank you for joining us, and with that, I will pass it over to Brad. Okay, thank you, Dylan. Uh, hello, everyone. As Dylan just mentioned, I'm Brad Larson, uh, Principal Scientist in the Applications Group here at Biotech. I'd also uh, like to welcome each of you and thank you for joining our webinar today. What I'm going to be talking about over the next hour is um, introducing you to uh, a new tool that Biotech has developed to enable media exchanges and washing of unattached 3D cell models. The tool, as uh, um, Dylan just mentioned, is called the AMX, or Automated Media Exchange Module, and works with the Multiflow FX, as you see here in the picture. Uh, if we take a quick look at what I'm going to be covering in the webinar, I'll begin by first taking a few minutes to talk about why 3D cell culture is important to so many areas of research today. I'm also going to take a bit of time to either introduce for some of you or refamiliarize for the rest of you the instrument that the module works with, which is Biotech's Multiflow FX dispenser and microplate washer. Then I'll explain how the AMX module works and how it enables robust aspiration and dispense of media or wash and fixative components without removing spheroids from microplate wells. Then finally, we'll look at both qualitative and quantitative validation of the module using a variety of cell models and microplates from a variety of vendors in 96 or 384 well format. So to begin with, if we go back to 2011, out of approximately 900 anti-cancer therapies in clinical trials or under FDA review, only 12 achieved approval, resulting in a loss of hundreds of millions of dollars that were spent on preclinical and clinical trials. The reason for these shortfalls was traced to using conventional 2D cell culture conditions. And as you can see in the model shown on the slide, mimicking an in vivo three-dimensional tumor, you see extracellular matrix or ECM components and cell-to-cell -cell and cell-to-matrix interactions important for differentiation, proliferation, and cellular functions. And when cells are cultured in 2D, ECM as well as signaling patterns seen in vivo are lost. Parallel research has also indicated that traditional 2D cell culture methods do not allow for areas of hypoxia, heterogeneous cell populations, including stromal cells, varying cell proliferation zones, such as quiescent and replicating, uh, ECM influences, soluble uh, signal gradients, and differential nutrient and metabolic waste transport. And as a result, this unnatural 2D environment may provide inaccurate data regarding the predicted response of cancer cells to chemotherapeutics. Many of the same concerns with using 2D cell culture to create accurate tumor models also extend to non-disease uh, organ models, including uh, liver models, which we're seeing data for here. Incorporating primary hepatocyte cultures provides levels of functionality closer to that seen in vivo, but even these cells are problematic when used in vitro under traditional 2D cell culture conditions. So here, as you can see by looking at the green, orange, and red lines, 2D cultured cells de-differentiate and rapidly decrease expression of cytochrome P450 enzymes and eventually lose viability. Hepatocytes cultured into 3D hepatospheres, in contrast, maintain high expression of cytochrome P450 enzymes over multi-week incubation periods used in this study. Additional studies have also cultured 3D hepatospheres for greater than one month with no loss of expression or viability. This, then, as we all know, has led to a dramatic increase in the incorporation of 3D cell models for a variety of research areas, such as oncology, toxicology, and in, uh, in addition to environmental and cosmetic testing. 
one of the most widely used methods to culture cells in 3D today is to place the cells into a round or pyramid bottom type of well coated with a surface which does not allow for cell attachment and then allow the cells to aggregate at the bottom of the well. This method is relatively easy to optimize and also allows aggregation and assay performance in the same well, which is a great advantage. However, if the cells need to be cultured for long periods of time, making media exchanges a necessity, or if the assay procedure is non-homogeneous, requiring washes to remove reagents or unincorporated dyes or probes, this can make for a tedious and very stressful process. Normally, to perform these steps, a manual, single, or multi-channel pipette is used and liquid is removed from the wells as slowly as possible. But even when a great deal of care is taken to evacuate the wells in a slow manner, spheroids many times are still removed, and as you can see from the uh, visual, visual results of the media exchange uh, performed here, this is uh, indeed the case. Dispense steps can also pose a problem. If the dispense speed is too high, spheroids can be pushed off the bottom of the well up into the media. Then, if a second aspiration step is performed, the spheroid is easily removed from the well. Or, even for single aspiration and dispense media exchange cycles, with a high rate of dispense, the spheroid can be pushed out of the field of view when performing imaging applications and eliminating the data from that well from any analysis. Of course, large liquid handling systems can be used to perform media exchanges or washes, but the size of these instruments creates the need for large, very expensive containment systems in order to avoid contamination when used. So to solve these multiple complications and make 3D assay procedures easier to perform, Biotech has developed an automated media exchange or AMX module specialized to perform single media exchanges or multiple plate washes in a slow, controlled manner that allows liquid to be aspirated from the wells of a spheroid microplate and then dispense back liquid without removing or disturbing the spheroids. The module works on Biotech's Multiflow FX dispenser, as you can see here, and I'll explain more about the particular components of the module and its operation in a couple slides. But before I do, as I mentioned earlier, I'd like to first go over the capabilities of the Multiflow FX. For those of you not familiar with the instrument, the Multiflow FX provides the ability to perform parallel non-contact dispensing in a wide variety of microplates up to 1536 well format using either peristaltic pumps or syringes. A second arm can also be outfitted with either a wash module to allow for column-wise washing, a RAD module, which enables random access dispensing into individual wells, and now the aspirate portion of the AMX module. The instrument itself has a very small footprint, allowing it to be easily placed into laminar flow hoods, which eliminates the need for purchasing a second contain, or separate containment system, which, as mentioned before, is necessary for large liquid handling systems. The instrument is also modular and upgradable, meaning that you can start with a single module, such as a single peristaltic pump or, syring, or syringe dispensing, and then add on more capabilities at a later date. For use with the AMX module specifically, as you can see in the picture, a primary and secondary peristaltic pump is required in addition to the secondary arm. So now if we take a closer look at the AMX module itself, we can see that the physical components consist of two peristaltic pump cassettes, which you see on the left, and two newly designed cassette heads, which contain a set of eight stainless steel tubes, which you see on the right. The cassettes are the same five microliter cassettes that would be used to perform non-contact dispensing and other procedures. And the top end of the tube, which you see with the, the black um, cassette heads on the right again, that extend up out of the top of the head, connect directly to the end of the cassette tubing. The cassettes and heads are completely autoclavable, which makes them easy to sterilize before use. When setting up the module to perform spheroid media exchanges or washes, the cassettes are added in the following manner to the FX. The uh, aspirate cassette is fed through the secondary peristaltic pump as indicated by the blue arrow. And again, this is the same as peristaltic pump setup when performing non-contact dispensing. 
Then the head is attached to the secondary accessory arm as indicated by the blue arrow on the right. The other end of the cassette tubing is placed into a container holding an appropriate liquid that will be used to prime the cassette prior to aspiration and to hold all liquid removing, uh, removed from the microplate wells. Priming with the liquid allows for consistent aspiration across all channels in the cassette, similar to the use of a system fluid in other liquid handling systems. The dispense cassette is added to the FX in the same manner. So here, the cassette tubing is fed through the primary peristaltic pump, again, as indicated by the blue arrow. Then the head of this cassette is attached to the primary arm. The other end of this cassette uh, can then be added to a container holding fresh media, wash components, or since each line of the cassette is attached to a single dispense tube, the eight individual lines can be added to individual tubes containing different concentrations of a test molecule for automated dispensing of a titration series. Once the cassettes are fully added to the multi-flow FX, if we look at the picture in this slide, you can get a better idea of the placement of the two AMX module heads. The aspirate head, again, is attached to the secondary arm and is seen to the right and higher up in the x-axis in the picture. The dispense head is attached to the primary arm to the left and further down in the x-axis in the picture. The advantage of this configuration is that the two heads can now move independently of each other, meaning that while either aspirate or dispense steps are being performed, the head not in use is automatically moved up in the x-axis to avoid hitting the microplate. The fine motor control in the z-axis for both arms also allows for a more accurate optimization of the aspiration and dispense procedures specific for the type and well configuration of the included plates. In addition to the hardware components I've been speaking to you about, new base code and software also play a large role in the utility of the AMX module. One of the most important features of the base code developed for the module is the new capability of the secondary peristaltic pump to run in the opposite direction of its normal operation. This enables an aspiration step to be performed with a peristaltic pump. The revised software also gives the ability to select new aspirate and dispense steps, which are specific to the module, as you can see in the screenshot of the liquid handling software seen in the upper right of this slide. When the steps are opened, either using the onboard computer or Biotech's liquid handling control software, a variety of rates can be chosen. For aspiration, the rates range from one to five, which corresponds to speeds of either um, 10 to 50 microliters per second. For dispense, rates range from one to eight, corresponding to 10 to 160 microliters per second. The rate chosen depends on whether 96 or 3 to 4 well spheroid plates are incorporated in addition to the well geometry. For example, is it a round bottom, a pyramid bottom, etc., cetera, a spheroid microplate? Also of importance is the makeup of the spheroids, such as a tightly aggregated, loosely aggregated, or otherwise type of spheroid. And finally, the number of cells in the spheroid itself. The software also gives the ability to move the uh, tubes away from the spheroid in the X, Y, and Z axis, which I'll further explain in the subsequent slides, and serves to improve the robustness and dependability of the aspiration and dispense steps. So now that I've introduced you to the components of the AMX module, let's take a look at how they work together to enable the spheroid microplate media exchanges and washes. First again, if we start with aspiration, we can see in the pictures at the right side of the slide that the tubes are positioned away from the spheroid in the back right corner of the well. The tubes are also slightly elevated from the actual well bottom, and this combination ensures that liquid aspiration takes place away from the spheroids. 
Therefore, when the liquid is removed from the well, using the optimized speed, 85 to 90 percent of the total volume is removed, leaving the spheroid behind. The value programmed into the step is also set to be greater than the volume expected to be removed from the well. And this accounts for any evaporation that may have taken place from the well and even out, evens out the volume within each well after the dispense step has been completed. The same process is followed whether the wells have a round or a square configuration or whether aspiration is taking place in the larger wells of a 96 well plate or the miniaturized wells of a 384 well plate. So to help further out, uh, illustrate the process, I have a few different video clips um, captured from different angles taking place in either 96 or 384 well plates. In the first video seen here, we're looking uh, from more of a top-down view at media being removed from a 96 well round bottom spheroid plate. So I'm just going to move to the next uh, slide and now you will see the actual video being played. So uh, the plates contained um, an original volume of 100 microliters of media, and so therefore a volume of 110 microliters was set in the software. And as you can see, the tubes move into the well using an offset in the X and Y axis that positions the tubes away from the middle of the well to the back right corner. And then aspiration then proceeds in a controlled manner until the volume level is below the bottom of the tubes, leaving the small residual volume. So then in the second video, we're again seeing aspiration from a 96 well plate. However, this time from the side of the plate to better um, see the media removal. So we'll move to the next slide. So again, you can see that the tubes move to the back corner of the well and aspiration proceeds in a controlled manner from column to column. Since the diameter of the wells vary from vendor to vendor, the X and Y offsets can be adjusted accordingly as part of the optimization process to create a reliable and repeatable aspiration procedure. Then, as I mentioned earlier, aspiration um, can also take place in 3D4 well plates. So here, wells are still evacuated in a column-wise fashion with the tubes uh, toggling from back and forth from the odd wells of the column first and then to the even wells of the column. So again, if we move on and start the video. Okay, so in this case, um, a pyramid bottom 384 well plate was incorporated, and you can see aspiration in the even rows, which uh, places tubes 8 uh, in row P. And then when this step is completed, the tubes move to the odd rows of the next column. And you can see the meniscus of the liquid moving down uh, the well as the media is removed. Okay, so then for dispensing, two uh, different main protocols are followed. When using 96 well spheroid plates, the tubes are again positioned at the back right corner of the well to avoid um, moving the spheroid as liquid is, dis is dispensed back into the well, which we see um, in the figure at the right of this slide. Then for 3D4 well plates, however, due to the smaller area of the well, and the slower speed of the dispense, the tubes are positioned directly above the spheroid. Uh, obviously not directly on top of the spheroid, but a small distance away in the z-axis. So due to the small area of the well, though, the spheroid is not displaced away from the center when liquid is put back into the well. And the uh, uh, speed of the dispense is, again, controlled depending on the geometry of the well and the size of the incorporated spheroids. So again, now let's take a look at what the dispense looks like in real life by, again, viewing a few video clips. So we'll start uh, with 96 well, um, top-down view as before. Go ahead and start that video. 
So again, as you can see, the tubes come down into the well, directly positioned at the back left corner of the wells. Liquid is then slowly um, uh, added in a controlled manner with the volume and speed previously optimized for the procedure being performed and included spheroid model. You can see here the liquid being slowly dispensed into uh, column 12 of the microplate. Okay. And then again, now the same dispense uh, process into 96 wool plates viewed from the side. So here we see tip placement into the back right corner of the well as with aspiration, and then a smooth controlled dispense of the liquid into the well. What's also apparent is the consistent volume in the wells of each column following completion of the aspirate and dispense procedures. Then finally, again, we have the 3D4 well plate. So we'll move on and view that video. Uh, so again, you can see movement of the tubes uh, between the odd and even rows of the column before moving on to the new column. And also liquid is dispensed slowly so that even though tubes are positioned directly at the middle of the well, as I mentioned previously, spheroids are not uh, displaced from the center of the well. Okay. So then during development, um, of the hardware and the software components of the AMX module, we performed extensive um, testing to ensure that each portion of the module could be easily optimized, and then the combination could deliver an exchange procedure that consistently does not remove spheroids from the wells of the included test plates. So in the initial set of experiments, a qualitative validation was performed. So first, uh, HCT-116 cells were dispensed in a 100 microliter volume to the wells of a 96-well round-bottom spheroid microplate, and the cells were allowed to aggregate for 48 hours to form spheroids. Following aggregation, 85 microliters was removed from the wells, either using a handheld multi-channel pipette for the odd columns or the AMX module on the multi-flow FX for the even columns. An equal volume was then dispensed back to the wells using, again, either manual or AMX autom um, automated dispensing to odd or even columns, uh, respectively. The process was then repeated three times, and following each round of media exchanges, bright field imaging of the plate was performed. Then in the second experiment, U87 glioblastoma cells were dispensed to wells of either a 96 or 3D4 well spheroid microplate. And then again, following aggregation, the AMX module here solely was used to perform the media exchanges. And then here, five, uh, five media exchange um, cycles were performed back to back to simulate a wash procedure and show that the module could be used for more than um, single aspirate and dispense cycles. So in this slide, we're seeing the results from the manual and AMX uh, exchange procedure comparison. In the screen capture at the top right of the slide showing the plate layout view following a single aspirate dispense cycle, we can see that no spheroids have been removed from the even column, whereas uh, 23 spheroids have been removed from the odd uh, columns. Then when looking at the bottom right image, showing again the plate layout view after three aspirate dispense cycles, we see now that 32 spheroids have been removed from wells where the procedure was performed manually, while again no spheroids were removed from AMX processed wells. And also of note, if you look at well G11, you can see that after one uh, media exchange cycle, 
the spheroid is not in the area of the well imaged. However, following the third exchange cycle, the spheroid is once again visible. This illustrates the point that I um, made earlier that spheroids, even if they aren't removed from the well, can be moved out of the imaging area by manual pipetting, which still renders any data from that well unusable. And then now if we look at the results from the second experiment where exchanges were performed so, uh, solely with the AMX module, you can see that all spheroids remain in the wells after five rounds of back-to-back -back aspirate and dispense cycles, meaning that processes such as washing fluorescent probes, uh, following incubation, or fixing, permeabilizing, and staining with antibodies can also be uh, performed in an automated fashion. Um, also, during the development process, we performed another type of visual validation to con uh, confirm that spheroids were not removed during the exchange process. So I'll move forward and start this video clip. So in this case, as you can see here, we're zooming in from below the, st uh, the plate stage containing the spheroid microplate. And we can see the spheroid in the middle of the well, and then the tube move into the well to begin the aspiration process. As the media is removed from the well, the spheroid remains in the exact position that it was um, in before the start of the liquid removal and does not move, move even as volume levels continue to de decrease and the meniscus gets closer to the spheroid. So again, obviously confirming the robustness of the optimized AMX aspiration step. So now, thus far, I've been talking about running the system as a standalone unit. However, for automated processing of multiple plates, the multi-flow effects can also be combined with either the biostack, if endpoint processing is being performed, or if live cell automation requiring sterile processing is necessary, the multi-flow effects can be combined with the biospa eight position benchtop uh, cell incubator in either a microplate reader or cellular imager such as this uh, citation one or five. So again, um, the picture on the upper right would be the multi-flow multi effects with the AMX module and the biostack, and then the picture on the bottom right would be the complete system of the multi-flow effects on the left uh, with AMX, the biospa on the right, and then in this case, in this position, it would be the citation um, imager. And then because the biospa controls temperature and CO2 or nitrogen levels and also contains a water uh, pan for humidity, long-term 3D assay procedures requiring media exchanges uh, can also be performed in an automated fashion. And I should also point out that the, the three instruments that you're seeing um, in the picture at the bottom left are small enough that uh, each of these can be also placed into a laminar flow hood uh, that biotech um, can um, provide so that, again, a large containment system is still not uh, required um, if you want to run all three of these um, instruments in, again, as I mentioned earlier, a live um, cell unattended um, process to work with, uh, with spheroids. So again, the reason why I'm explaining this to you now is that the final uh, set of quantitative validations that I'm going to talk about included an automated procedure incorporating the multi-flow effects with the MX, the BioSpa, and the Citation 5. So here we dispensed multiple different cell types into spheroid microplates from a variety of uh, spheroid microplate vendors, including Corning, Griner, and SBio and allowed the cells to aggregate into spheroids, and then performed a 14-day spheroid proliferation experiment where the spheroids were dosed with a variety of camptothesin concentrations. At time zero, and then again at regular intervals subsequent, media or media, or media containing compound was automatically removed from the microplate wells using the AMX aspirate cassette and then media with fresh compound was placed back into the wells using the dispense cassette. 
individual methods were optimized depending on the plates and the well configurations being used. So here in this video clip, we're seeing kinetic images uh, captured of an uninhibited uh, PANK-1 spheroid, uh, which was tested in a 96-well spheroid microplates from, uh, from S-Bio. And I'll start this up. And as you can see, the spheroid remains in the viewing field and uh, continues to grow in size as the cells continue to proliferate over the 14-day period, as we would expect. Then when we look at the plate layout view of all of the test spheroids uh, at the end of the incubation period, which is shown on the right, we see that no spheroids were lost following multiple rounds of media removal and compound redosing. In addition, we see that spheroids in row A, which received a 10 micromolar dose of camptothecin, uh, proliferated the least and are the smallest in size. And then as we go down the plate, spheroids that re uh, received lower doses of camptothecin have proliferated to greater extents, with the largest spheroids being at the bottom of, of the plate where the cells were exposed to little or no drug. We also see that spheroids in the same row are of similar size and that the wells are clean and show no evidence of contamination, even after being in contact with the aspirate and dispense pins uh, multiple times. And all these visual observations confirm that equal volumes and concentrations of drug are delivered to the wells during the repeated exchange processes, and that incorporation of the cassettes uh, when autoclaved do not pose a contamination threat. So to con uh, further confirm the results from the spheroid proliferation test, we also went on to quantify calculated spheroid volume. And to do this, we used the Gen5 cellular analysis software available with the Citation 5 to automatically place object masks around each spheroid image at every time point collected. So I'm going to move on to that video clip start that again. And here we can see the same spheroid proliferation uh, movie that I showed to you earlier. However, in this case, uh, you can see in yellow the object mask that was automatically placed by the software for each image captured over the 14-day period. Then if we plot calculated volume over time for each of the time points collected, from the spheroids dosed with the eight different uh, camptothecin concentrations, using the three different cell models, you can see the kinetic dose response curves shown here. And from all this data, we can see that spheroids proliferate as expected in relation to the concentration of the drug added to the wells, confirming that the incorporation of the AMX module into an automated long-term assay procedure provides robust and reliable data. So then before we, con uh, we conclude, I want to mention that we currently have validated methods that are available for 96 and 3D4 well round or U-shaped spheroid microplates from Corning and Griner, as you can see. And then for U, V, and M bottom 96 well and U bottom 3D4 well spheroid microplates from s -Bio. And these methods can be either sent to current Multiflow FX customers upon purchase of the AMX module or used for demo pur uh, purposes with prospective customers. So in conclusion, as I've shown here today, the AMX module used on the Multiflow FX enables the performance of either single aspirate and dispense cycles for media exchange purposes or multiple aspirates and dispense cycles for endpoint washing procedures. With a small footprint enabling the instrument to uh, fit into existing laminar flow hoods and the ability to autoclave the cassettes, sterile processing can easily be achieved for either short-term or long-term assays. 
And when coupled with additional automation, such as the BioSpot 8 and Citation, walkaway long-term 3D testing procedures can easily be achieved. So if you'd like to learn more about the AMX module, I invite you to go to the two web links provided here. The first um, gives information about the product itself, and then the second is an application note that was recently published that gives more information also about the validation um, experiments that were performed. And with that, um, I again thank you for your attention, and we'll take any questions that uh, you might have. Great. Thank you, Brad, uh, for that terrific presentation. Um, as you mentioned, we'll, we're going to now take a look at some of the questions that have come in. Um, so if you haven't done so, please be sure to enter them in the chat window. Um, we'll get to as many as we can, and any that we are unable to get to, we will follow up with offline. So thank you. Okay, so um, uh, the first one is talking about the, the RAD module um, being uh, used on a different instrument such as the EL5 or EL, uh, EL406. Uh, that module um, is actually specific to the multi-flow FX, um, but if you have the correct con um, uh, configuration, of the multi-flow effects that uh, that module can be um, can be added uh, at a at a later time. So that is that is certainly possible. And also, um, uh, then the second question um, from the um, the same attendee uh, was asking about the aspiration speed in microliters per second. So if you remember, in my previous um, slide earlier in the presentation, I mentioned that the slowest speed both for aspiration and dispense would be uh, 10 microliters per second, which uh, in, again, in a lot of the, the testing that I have performed with uh, spheroids, as low as just a few hundred uh, cells per spheroid going up to uh, spheroids, you know, that contain multiple thousands of cells, um, that slowest speed uh, will definitely work um, for any, you know, spheroid model in a round bottom uh, or pyramid bottom plate. And then if you have um, uh, spheroids with with a larger number of cells, like I, like I mentioned, with you know maybe you know a thousand, two thousand, five thousand cells, you certainly could go up to a higher rate of both um, uh, aspiration and dispense. Because remember, larger spheroids will have um, a bigger bulk and a, a more of a, a weight to them, uh, so that will allow them to you know. Uh, be, uh, maintain their position in the bottom of the well during uh, a slightly faster aspiration and dispense um, speed. Okay. Um, so, in the next question is, do we need the AMX module to change media for adherent 2D cell culture and 3D um, cell culture within uh, Matrigel? So that's that's uh, definitely a good question. So um, if you have uh, adherence um, cells, the uh, I also talked about that the multi-flow effects has a wash module, and that allows you to perform washing with a vacuum pump. Um, uh, so you uh, so you certainly could use that for cells that you know have a, a high degree of ad adherence to the bottom of um, to the bottom of the well, or if your uh, spheroids or tumoroids or organoids are uh, encased into um, into a hydrogel such as major gel or collagen. Um, then you could also um, use the the vacuum pump, obviously with the caveat that you would need to definitely optimize the height um, of uh, tube placement, just as you would with the AMX module. Um, but you could you could certainly use the AMX module, you know, if you just wanted that, um, and and not have to worry about having both the vacuum pump and and the AMX module. AMX would certainly work for uh, 2D cultured cells. Or um, you know any type of 3D cell model within um, within a hydrogel. Okay, so um, if we 
Uh, if we move on, um, the next one is talking about uh, potential use of the AMX module um, uh, with other types of uh, other types of plate um, configurations. So I, c I can tell you that uh, future testing will um, include uh, work with um, with 24 wells. Uh, the tube placement should allow the um, the tubes to go into the middle of a 24 well plate and um, so again uh, either if you have uh, your 3D um, you know um, cell models in 24 I know a lot of uh, organoid work is currently taking place um, in lower density plates um, so that is something that we will definitely be looking at as far as 1536 that is a possibility uh, I, I will just you know um, additional testing will have to uh, you know, uh, make sure that um, you know tubes can can consistently go down into the wells of the 1536 well plate, but I don't see why that would um, would be a problem uh, in the future. Okay. Um, okay. So the next question is wondering if the BioSpa or BioStack would fit inside of a hood. So again, um, the BioSpa certainly, as I um, just mentioned a few slides ago, uh, can certainly fit inside of a hood. Uh, Biotech has recommended hoods that work with the BioSpa. And then, you know, again, if you want to add the um, the multiflow effects or multiflow effects with a reader or an imager, that certainly can be achieved. Um, BioStack, I'm that with the that has a little higher um, uh, or a, um, uh, in the z axis uh, so I would have to that's something that we would have to check into and and um, get back to that may not be able to be placed into a hood, but that's something that we could certainly um, look into and get back to you on okay the next one is um, uh, Concerning use of AMX in other non-3D applications, uh, example using tissue samples in a micro well. Um, I that certainly you know any any type of cell model, um, you know tissues may be attached to the bottom of a microplate well, so that certainly um, would be possible. Uh, I will mention that one of the things that we're uh, we will be working on in the future is looking into use of the AMX module with um, non-attached um, suspension models such as um, uh, immune cells um, to see if that could be uh, used, you know, to uh, to do media exchanges during. Um, uh, activation procedures such as uh, like T cell activation or working with NK cells, but that that's work that has not been um, completed yet, and uh, more information should be available uh, for that um, in the in the coming um, months. Um, uh, so, in the next question, it talks about oh, how does dispense of different concentrations of proliferating uh, compounds um, be achieved. So again, remember um, I talked about that with both of the, with with our peristaltic pump cassettes, and this is true both with AMX or with non-contact dispensing. One um, one tube of the cassette goes to one you know, or one line is is specific, so it goes all the way through. So in that case. You can put um, one end of the of the tubing into uh, you know again into a 50 mil conical tube or a 1.5 mil conical tube, and then that um, concentration of the drug or you know whatever it may be antibody um, et cetera would be dispensed into um, uh, wells of that particular row because again that that tube would be um, would would work with all the wells of uh, one particular row of a 96 well plate or obviously two um, rows of a 384 well plate. So in that case, um, with each line going into a different concentration, again, of your test agent, uh, that's how you can achieve um, up to an eight-point dose response uh, with, the, with the dispense cassette of the AMX module. 
Um, again, we, uh, another question about different um, well configurations, and, and again, this this will uh, that testing will be coming soon, but that uh, certainly should be um, should be able to be um, achieved. Um, a uh, question about pipetting into a 3D4 well plate. Um, the the speeds obviously will uh, uh, differ slightly depending on the um, on the the size of the spheroids. But what I found is uh, either with a round bottom or a pyramid bottom, because uh, the the spheroid it, it, you have a smaller uh, area of the well, the spheroid really stays in place. So you can um, bump up the aspiration and the dispense um, speeds, so that um, you know you aren't uh, taking you know an extremely long time to uh, to do the um, the, the meat exchange procedure for a 384 well plate. So still um, a few minutes, and then that procedure should be um, uh, should be completed, and then you can either you know obviously manually remove the plate back. To to the incubator, or if it's in an automated situation, the plate would be uh, moved back to the bio spa. Um, the average dead volume for the cassettes, this is a, a five microliter uh, cassette, so the dead volume is um, is around five uh, five mils. I will mention that the, um, the cassette tubing, if uh, if necessary, can be cut. The, the, the length of the tubing when it comes from biotech is 30 inches in, um, in length. And the reason why it's slightly longer is that many times the multi-flow FX is used in um, an online uh, screening type of uh, configuration so that the vessel containing the liquid is, you know, a certain distance away from the actual instrument. So uh, if that's not necessary, the, the tubing can be cut, and then obviously um, the vessel would just be you know, placed closer to the actual instrument, so that can definitely cut down on the, um, on the dead volume that you would, uh, that you would um, be using in addition to the amount that you would need for dispensing into the plates. Um, the next one... Um, uh, I'm not quite sure about uh, what's being. Um, there's a the question that um, it says, "What is the MTBF for AMX module?" I'm not quite sure what that's referring to. So if you want to re-submit um, your question, that would be fine. Um, so uh, the next question is talking about what's the accuracy of the X, Y, and Z motors. Um, so they they do work in steps. So at each um, uh, each step refers to a fraction of uh, a micrometer. So in that case, you know you can change the the placement of the tubes in all three axes, you know, by by a, a very small amount, um, so that you're not, uh, you know, sacrificing and having to go up multiple uh, micrometers with uh, with each step. So you should really be able to dial in your, um, you know, the the proper placement of the tubes, um, depending on what microplate. Again, whether it's you know the three I mentioned, uh, Corning Griner, or S-Bio, or some other type of um, uh, microplate. Um, um, so uh, another question is, can this system be used for um, uh, uh, stem cell differenti differentiation protocols? This would be a great way to um, uh, to use this this method because obviously differentiation protocols. Um, Typically require uh, cells, whether they're 2D or or 3D, uh, to be in the wells for multiple weeks. So obviously there, you would need to, um, you know, to perform multiple uh, media exchange um, steps during that uh, during that uh, procedure. So yes, this would be a great use for uh, stem cell differentiation procedures. Uh, another question is about transwell plates. So again, um, with the um, with the positioning of the uh, of the of the tubes in the z-axis, I mean, obviously you can you know with the transwells you have 
a you know kind of a, a either a um, a single insert or an apical plate uh, placed within a basolateral plate. So you the you know the the placement of the membrane is is up in the z-axis. So obviously there you would just um, uh, optimize the you know the 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 movement or the the positioning of the tubes uh, upwards in the z-axis. So again that should be um, able to be used uh, with um, with trans wall plates. Uh, have we next question is have we worked with um, uh, flat bottom microplates? Actually, we have um, uh, just recently, and um, you know that that uh, procedure can be um, achieved. Now, uh, one one caveat of a flat bottom microplate, especially working with spheroids, is that you know the spheroids can be um, uh, Basically, you know, since you don't have the round bottom, well, the the spheroids can be basically anywhere within that um, within that well. So, you know, some care would have to be taken to properly uh, uh, position the tubes in the z-axis. Um, so, again, that um, spheroids aren't um, aren't being removed, but with the the you know the lowest setting, the 10 microliter uh, per um, per second aspirate rate, that certainly should be able to be um, uh, uh, to be achieved um, and I uh, just got confirmation from one of my colleagues uh, who's also on the um, uh, on the the webinar that depending on the hood this is this has to do with the question about can the bio stack um, be placed into a hood. So, uh, depending on the hood configuration, uh, some of our we have different um, uh, plate stack uh, uh, that work with the bio stack. Um, so that again, uh, defend, depending on the configuration, uh, a 10 or a 30 plate stack, which, which obviously would not have a, 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 a as great of a height, um, would uh, would fit into a hood. Um, but uh, the 50 plate stack, obviously, which would be higher would not uh, would not fit into those um, hoods, and then um, uh, one of the um, one of the the last questions is: Are the validated programs for the manufacturer specific plate types based on different flow rates and tip positions of the wells? Um, I mean, they they would be so. Um, Obviously, different manufacturers have uh, the um, the diameter of the wells is slightly different, and um, also uh, specifically for uh, for 384, uh, some manufacturers have uh, a round bottom for 384. Some have a pyramid bottom, and again, the geometry of the bottom of the well where the the spheroid is sitting can also um, play um, into the the, spe uh, the speeds that can be um, uh, that can be used for both aspirate and dispense. But again, those are you know we can we can certainly provide those methods and uh, in any um, optimization of different plate types can certainly be easily uh, carried out within, you know, a very short, um, you know, period of time. It doesn't take a lot of uh, of, um, of time to um, to do, uh, to do that uh, um, um, type of uh, um, you know type of an optimization procedure. Um, and then going back to the um, the mean time between. Failure. Um, I'm assuming that's potentially. Um, how often have we uh, seen um, removal of, of spheroids in the testing? I guess what I can tell you is that once, um, with with all the different plates that I've I've mentioned during um, the webinar, that once I have the um, uh, you know the the positioning of the pins optimized. I do not see uh, removal of of spheroids. So obviously, you know, there's going to be a little bit of um, uh, time and care, you know, by the um, individual user. Again, if you are um, uh, using a different plate type, but you know, with the ones that we have validated right now, we're seeing excellent results. And um, and you know, with repeated uh, testing, as I you know, as I mentioned, with especially with the um, you know, with that 14-day uh, spheroid proliferation, 
where you know we we had you know multiple um, aspirate and dispense cycles in all the wells of 96 and 384 well plates, we did not see spheroid removal um, during that complete time. Okay, so it looks like that is the um, the last question, and we're getting close to the top of the hour. So I think I'm going to uh, complete the Q and A session, and then I will uh, throw it back to um, to Dylan. But again, if if anyone has um, further questions about the system, or if you're interested in in demoing it, uh, please you know let uh, either let your local um, sales reps know, or or feed a question through me. And um, you know we can pass along any, any information or bring it in for a uh, a demo. So okay, thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much, Brad, and thank you to everybody that, that attended and all the great questions. Um, and we hope you uh, we will see you again soon.